Well, our motto is 70% authentic, 30% whatever we want. And we want to encourage people to kind of take what they like from their culture and make it their own. Kind of trying to blend the old and the new and represent ourselves. Hi, I'm Valerie Liu. I'm Katie Kwan. And we're Rice, Paper, Scissors. A Vietnamese restaurant in San Francisco. What it? Hi. So Katie and I got our start at the underground market, which is a marketplace for home cooks. We're both hustling Vietnamese food as separate vendors. That was about four years ago. I was selling banh mi burgers. We just realized that we both had a huge interest in selling Vietnamese food. Literally, talked about it. Five days later, had our first pop-up. We were born. So we both traveled to Vietnam. Just to keep on eating and learning and learning. And we bring back a lot of the dishes we pick up during our travels. I think one of the challenges was that we started from zero. Um, like zero capital, zilch. You got an idea, you just gotta do it. We took some of our own money, yeah. bought a stack of little red stools, and started our first pop-up. So the little red stools come from Vietnam. You see it all over the place, in alleyways and homes. So for us, what it means is a street lifestyle. We like to put them on our street, out in division, get people to drink coffee, gossip with their neighbors. Only requisite was that we had little red stools. We had them from day one. This last year was growing a team, so now we employ like four people full-time. I was born and raised in San Francisco. I was born and raised in the South Bay. Well, the Bay Area kind of allows for pop-ups. For us, pop-up is a state of mind. It's about having an idea and just doing it. There's a lot of ideas flowing around, and they're all kind of in their infancy, so it's nice to see them grow forward, and everyone's working on that. Every Wednesday, I go to the farmer's market because there's all these Vietnamese and Asian vendors that I can't really access through any other channel. So in doing that, I have pretty good relationships with most of them. I go to the grocery store all the time and just like shoot the shit with the woman who owns the grocery store. We talk about life. I call her my auntie. And she's a badass Asian woman. I'm really inspired by Asian grandmas. I see them in Chinatown, like schlepping up hills with like 40 pounds of produce to cook for their family and to hustle and to be out there and be alive and be on the street. And like, that's the spirit we want to carry. I think that when people underestimate us, it just gives me fuel inside to kind of beat them out. So there's this time where we were trying to be part of this street food festival. We're voted in, set up, and showed up so prepared that we just beat everyone else's competition. It was pretty cool. Tonight, it's the Lunar Night Market, and it's a celebration of the Lunar New Year, Year of the Ram. And we're getting five of our friends together to sell Asian street food. It's sold out. <laughs> There's 300 people that are gonna come. They're gonna come hungry. And we're gonna make sure we can feed them. So for the new year, we like to you know, serve things that are whole, that represent long life, prosperity, family. We also have longevity noodles. Long life, long noodle. Yeah. This year's the year of the ram. To me, it means charging forward. I don't think you could run this business without perseverance. Our goal is to make fish sauce a household item. It's the next ketchup. Yeah. When I'm 95, I'll be like, one time there was no fish sauce in any of the households, and I did that. So for one day, we're going to rename our dish Steph Curry. It's powerful, it's spicy, and it's well-loved.